Hey you guys, I'm Real 2G and this is my WWE SummerSlam review show. Thanks for coming out on this Sunday night. What a show WWE has given the WWE Universe as well as myself. Let's get down to what went down on the big event of the summer. We had at the pre-show the United States Championship match involving the United States champ Santino Morello and his opponent Antonio Cesaro and I pretty much called the match like I said during my SummerSlam prediction show that Cesaro would be indeed the new United States Champion but it didn't come of the fact the Cobra was done by Santino not once but twice uh, the second time he got kind of distracted by Oksana and Cesaro took it away from there, so I would say that was a pretty cool match, but like I said, Santino had to give up his title. Antonio Cesaro is the new United States champion. the first match of the night. It was Chris Jericho. Y2J, baby! He's squaring off the face. Dolph Ziggler, the show-off. And Dolph Ziggler simply said that Chris Jericho could not win the big one. This, by far, was pretty much the best match of the night. I have to say, Chris Jericho all bandaged from what went down on Friday Night Smackdown to Dolph Ziggler. A great match indeed. I was looking forward to, to this match. I said, if Ziggler would have won this match, I think Chris Jericho would have just gave up and might have left. But it was Chris Jericho with the guts and determination that he is. That's why he is the best in the world at what he does. And damn it, Chris Jericho won the big one. His first pay-per-view win of 2012, he beat Dolph Ziggler in a match he really needed so bad just to shut Ziggler. Then the, the next match up. we have Daniel Bryan. He's going one-on-one -on -one against Kane. This was brought to you in part by General Manager A.J. Lee. And I simply said that Kane would win this match, but indeed he did not. It was a pretty cool match, but Daniel Bryan and Kane, good chemistry. They've been wrestling each other half and half so far this past year. And Daniel Bryan, after he got taken down in the choke slam, he was able to do a roll-up pin on Kane. And he beat Kane. Kane was so livid with himself that he went into the back. And Josh Matthews was trying to figure out what was going on with Kane. He assaulted Josh Matthews. We get the next match. It's for the Intercontinental Championship. It's The Miz. He's going one on one and defending his title against Rey Mysterio. Like I said, what the hell does Rey Mysterio need with the Intercontinental title? Really much of nothing. He was trying to see if he could do it to do it. Well, I predicted that the Miz would retain the title, and he did just that. It was a pretty good match, like I said, but if you notice, Rey Mysterio came out looking like the Dark Knight. He had his little mask on. He had on his black cape, like he is uh, Gotham City's own crime fighting machine, but it's San Diego's crime fighting machine because he's from San Diego. So, I pretty much suspected that Miz was going to retain the title anyway. He did put him in the 619, but that 619 turned out to be the bone crushing skull finale that Miz just did away with Rey Mysterio, and he won that match. Pretty good match, but Rey still couldn't get the job done. Miz retains. So we get Sheamus, the World Highway Championship match. He's going against Alberto Del Rio. First, this match was called off general manager. Booker T last week due to Sheamus being attacked by Alberto Del Rio's henchmen who they thought was going to take him away because he needed to be deported back to Mexico but I guess after what happened on Friday Night Smackdown uh, Chris Jericho losing to Alberto Del Rio in the main event that's why Booker T did reinstate this match so Alberto did get the match against Sheamus and like I said it was a really tight match Sheamus Head to head with Del Rio because Del Rio has been really attacking Sheamus on all cylinders the last several weeks now. And so here we are, the big one. Sheamus, I have to say, 
really did win this match. But it was the controversial, the foot, not the foot, but the shoe off by Del Rio over the hands of Ricardo Rodriguez. And it backfired. And Sheamus, with the referee's back turn, hit Del Rio with the shoe. And he ended up pinning him. One, two, but Del Rio's foot clearly touched the rope. But the referee didn't see it, and Sheamus won the match. So I think Del Rio is probably going to protest this tomorrow night on Raw. Sheamus retains his world. Then we get the Tag the Team Championship match. You got Kofi Case and R Truth battle against PTP, primetime players. And from what I heard last week from one of my sources on YouTube, AEW was fired. So, Darren Young and Titus O'Neil had to fight without a manager, and this was an okay match, but I said this match would turn out to be Kofi's and R-Truth's win to retain their title. If you notice, Kofi was looking almost like Superman with his red, yellow, and blue trunks, but it was all Kofi attire, and it looked pretty decent, but he was looking almost like Superman! If they did have lost that match, I would have said, hmm, what a total waste. So, Kobe Kingston and R Truth did get the win. It's a cool match. Tag Team Champion. We get the WWE Championship. CM Punk, John Cena, Big Show. This was a crazy match that almost ended up kind of crazy, if you get what I'm saying. Big Show really led this whole entire match. CM Punk and John Cena, they get little pockets of some little strengths and whatever, putting the big man down, but it was funny that CM Punk put the Anaconda Vice Grip on Big Show, and then John Cena puts the STF on Big Show. Big Show taps out, and CM Punk and John Cena wondering who won the match. But AJ comes in. Restart the match. Big Show. Choke slam. Both of them. He tried to pin Cena. He gets up. He tried to pin Punk. He gets up. But he tried to get the knockout punch to Cena. He missed. Cena put him in the AA. But got pushed away by CM Punk. And he pins the Big Show. CM Punk retains the WWE title. Now, who's disrespecting who now? CM Punk or John Cena? You be the judge. In the main event, which is known as the Perfect Storm, Triple H, before the match, early during the pre-show, told referee Scott Armstrong that, let us fight. Let us fight. No count out, no disqualification. Match will be won by someone tapping out or somebody being pinned. I gotta say, Brock Lesnar, Triple H, fought there asses off. Brock Lesnar at one point tried to get his arm like he did in the Camilla lock, whatever that is. Camilla lock. I forget what the lock is. But anyway, Brock Lesnar led this match. Brock Lesnar got hurt a few times. A few times he was complaining about his stomach because the man has been complaining of stomach issues in the past, even when he was with the UFC. So, Triple H Put him in the pedigree. Brock broke out. Triple H got put into the F5. He broke out. I had to say that Brock Lesnar, as much as I hate his ass, he had to win this match because he lost to John Cena as Extreme Rules. He was not going to lose to Triple H. So he put him in the Kimura Lock. Triple H tapped out, and I think he broke his arm again. We're not sure. We have to see tomorrow night. But Brock Lesnar wins. Does this mean, is this the end of Triple H's in-ring career? Because he is the CEO of this company. We will know all this and any other answers tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw. I have to say, this was a decent SummerSlam. In spite of got the theme song for SummerSlam, Don't Give Up. Kevin Rudolph, you call yourself a multi platinum singer? You was a mess. Oh my 
goodness, I had to walk away. Like I said, a decent show, an eight on my half, even though Triple H lost, and I said Brock Lesnar had to win, and he did just that. So what did y'all think about SummerSlam 2012? Let me know what y'all think. Post your comments. I will see you back here tomorrow night after Monday Night Raw. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again real soon.